What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So you might have noticed this button on the Toolpath tab in Carbide Create, and there's a good chance that you just either scrolled right past it or you clicked on it, saw a bunch of different settings that didn't really make sense and said forget about it. And what it's going to allow you to do is add these toolpaths to create different textures. Um, and you know, you can use them on signs, uh, furniture, boxes, anything you can imagine. And it's just gonna add that nice little custom extra touch to your pieces. So today I'm gonna show you uh, what all those settings are, how to adjust them to kind of optimize your cut times. I'm also gonna show you some different finishing techniques that you can use. So stick around. Before we get going on today's project, I just wanted to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, and that's Precise Bits. Uh, not only do they make super high quality router bits, they also make this amazing collet kit and bit storage system that I just can't stop looking at. Uh, this thing really is amazing. They've also got a bunch of great resources on their website, like different tutorials and calculators for feeds and speeds and that kind of stuff. And we've got a discount code for them which is also going to be in the description and right here. So make sure you get over there, show them some love, check out all the cool products they make, and let's get going on the tutorial. All right, we're gonna do just a few different examples here so I can show you what different settings will do um, and how they're gonna affect everything. For this first couple, I'm just gonna start by drawing a box. And I'm just gonna put a letter inside there. And if we select the C first and then the box, we can align that to the center of that. All right, we can select both of those and we'll just jump over to the toolpath tab, click on texture, and I'm going to use a 1 8 ball mill, which has already been selected here. For depth per pass, we can just go 0.1 the feed rate and plunge, I'm gonna go 200. I like running these really fast. And when you start seeing it cut, you'll realize that going fast definitely isn't a problem because of the way that it makes the cut. So for this one, let's make our step over 0.1. And what step over is, is actually how much it steps over from each line. So you'll see if I make it 0.01. We'll just click OK. See how tight that is. So it has very, very little step over each time. And if I change it to 0.1, now you can see it has a lot of step over. All right, our next option is step over variation. And what that is, is just the variation, like it says, of each time it steps over. And you can see like on this one here, it's a little wider than this one. So we can change that so it'll have more variation or less variation. Let's just leave this one at 50%. Our next options are min and max depth. And you'll notice if you click on these, the, this little thing pops up here trying to explain it to you. Uh, unfortunately on mine here, it gets cut off. I've noticed in the new versions of Carbide Create, you can click and drag this window to make it a little bigger so you can see these. But every time I do that, it crashes the program. So each one of these lines, it will randomly plunge a certain amount, and it's going to plunge between these two numbers, so whatever we set our min and max to. If you don't want any variation in that, you can just set both of these numbers to the same. So let's set them both to 0 0.02. Min and max length is next, and that is how long each plunge ends up being. So how long the bit is plunged into our material before raising. And again, you can set a minimum and maximum, and it's going to vary between those two. If you don't want it to vary, just set both of the numbers to be the same. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just leave these alone for this one. Now, each time it does plunge, it will overlap the last cut. And we can adjust that with this min and max overlap. So let's change that to 20 for min and for max, we'll just leave it 50. 
And then this one down here, the angle, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's set to 20 right now, but let's set it to zero. And you'll see that now these lines run straight across. If you wanted them straight up and down, set it to 90. Let's go ahead and check this simulation out. It's a little hard to see. But as long as we like the way it looks, we can go ahead and cut it out. Now, before we do that, I just want to take a quick moment to stress something that is super important, and that's cleaning your collet. Uh, this was definitely something that I wasn't doing enough, and I'm using the Precise Bits Collet Care here. This comes with your collet kit, and it's good to clean this regardless of whether you have this precision collet or you just have the regular one. If you've ever had a bit slip out on you, you probably know how big of a headache this can be. And just a little bit of maintenance goes a long way here. Now I'll take my bit and insert it up to that collar and make sure it's good and tight. And like I said, I'll go over a couple different finishing techniques. This is the first one and this is very simple. Uh, it's just spraying your material with whatever color you would like it to be first and then you're going to machine through that. So any of your machined surfaces are going to be the natural wood color and then the parts that aren't touched are going to be whatever color you use, in this case black. And what you're probably noticing here is how far apart these lines are and that was due to our step over. You'll notice a slight amount of step over variation and then what you're also going to see is that min and max overlap. So as it starts cutting a new line and continues into the previous one, that's that overlap that it's talking about. And when you put two different overlaps, a min and a max, it will vary between that each time. Now, due to the size of this bit, we're not seeing a lot of variation between the lines. So what probably would have been best to do is just set a min and max length that are both the same and were longer than this cube. So it was four inches, we could have set it just over four inches. And then it would have just done a series of solid lines. That probably would have been a lot faster and it would have pretty much yielded the same results. All right, for our next one, I'm just gonna go ahead and select both of those, hit Command C or Control C, and we'll move it over here a little bit. And now what I want to do on this is make an outline. Like you saw in the last one that we did, it didn't really have a clear outline around the letter. So on this one, we're going to actually add one in. And we'll first select the letter, select our offset path. We'll select outside, and we'll do this 0 0.05. And then we're going to select the box, offset. We'll do an inside this time, and again, 0 0.05. And now what I want to do is select the outside of the box and then the inside of the letter. We'll go over to Toolpath and we're going to select Contour for this. And it doesn't really matter what we put in here, we're actually going to use a V-bit. The problem is if we select a V-bit, it confuses the program and doesn't respond right. But if we tell it that it's an end mill or a ball mill, and then we actually just put a V-bit in when we run it, everything will work properly. So just for the sake of the simulation, I'm going to go ahead and put in a 132nd ball mill. And again, we can run that pretty fast. And we'll leave our max depth at 0.1 for this. And then we want to make sure that we select no offset. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the inside box and the outside of the C. And that's where we're going to do our texture. And again for that we're going to use an eighth inch ball mill. We'll turn these feed rates up again. And for this one let's make our step over a little bit smaller. Uh, it'll be bigger than what the factory default is. We'll make this 0 0.0625. We'll leave our step over at 50%. For the depth, we're going to go a little deeper here, um, just making it 0 0.04. Min and max length we'll leave alone. I, I usually don't really touch those. And then again, we're going to go 20 and 50 on the min and max overlap. And let's leave this one at an angle of 20 degrees. 
So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know I'm big on these depth stop collars. And one of my favorite things about these bits from Precise Bits is you can get them with them installed. So I don't have to reset zero. All I need to do is swap out bits, make sure they're pushed up all the way to the collar, tighten it up good, and then I'm ready to run. This is a huge time saver. Now what you're probably noticing here is that there is a little more variation. There's kind of a gap between the lines and it's plunging a little bit deeper. I think this looks a lot better like this. I also kind of like the angle a little more myself. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's really just what you think looks good. What I will say though is sometimes you can adjust the settings and have them set super slow and it's going to take a really long time to run. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and copy this one last time. We'll jump over to our toolpath tab, click texture again. And for this one, we're going to use a V bit. So I have this 45 degree V bit that I want to try out. And on this one, we'll make our step over 0.04. Step over variation, we'll change that a little bit. We'll go to 30%. Min depth, 0 0.04, max, 0 0.04. Min and max length, we'll leave alone. Overlap, again, we'll do 20 and 50. And on this one, we're going to set our angle to 75. Let's go ahead and install that 45 degree V bit. Like I said, I'm going to put links in the description to all of these bits that I'm using. So don't worry if you don't catch the part numbers here. This definitely gives it a different look. Uh, it's a little choppier. I do like the way that it follows the letters a little better. Kind of makes them stand out a little clearer. But I'm still kind of partial to using the ball mill myself. All right, for this final one, we're going to do a real cool project. We're going to do a shop logo. And I've already gone ahead and imported that in. And I've got a box drawn around it. And where we're going to start is by doing that texture. So let's check out the settings. I'm using a quarter inch ball mill. And I've set this one to 200 and 200. For our step over, we're at 0.1. Step over variation, 20%. The min and max depth. This time I changed it. So we're going to have a little variance there. We're at 0 0.01 min and 0 0.03 max. Min and max length, I changed them just a little bit, 0.5 and 1 for the max. And then min and max overlap, again, I went with 20 and 50. And I kind of like that 20 degree angle, so I went ahead and left that for this one. All right, and this brings us to our second finishing technique, which is kind of going to look the opposite of the first one that we did. I'm going to put a couple coats of this polyurethane on. I put them on pretty heavy. I'll let the first coat sit until it's dry to the touch, scuff it with a Scotch-Brite pad, and then put another heavy coat on, and then again come through and scuff that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of the parts of our logo, with the exception of the outline, and then this outline here for the box and we're going to do an advanced v-carve and we're going to do this using a quarter inch end mill and you can see my settings there I'm at 150 and 150 for our plunge and feed and just don't forget you need to click enable pocket area tool to do this and then for our v-bit I'm using a 45 degree v-bit now I find it best to use the tightest angle v-bit that you have for stuff like this basically whatever is going to give you a sidewall that is more vertical. If you try this with like a 90 degree, you'll notice that some of the letters and everything can get a little distorted because it's not going as deep into the cut and that original texture that you added on there kind of messes with everything. So just use something like a 45, maybe a 30 if you have it. 
And the other important thing to remember here is that you need either a bit setter or like what I'm using on these bits here, those collars. Because as this is running, it's first gonna run that quarter inch end mill, then it's going to prompt you for a bit change and you're not going to have the opportunity to set zero again. So if you're using collars like I've got on these bits, you don't have to worry about it. You just remove the bit, put it in, click continue until it starts back up again, and you're good to go. So for this, I've set the max depth to 0.150. I'm just using some cheap acrylic craft paint to fill this in. You just want to work really fast here. You don't want to let this dry or anything. And just make sure you get all the details. That's why I switched over to a smaller brush. And once you get everything filled in, you're just going to use a rag. I use a dry one first, then I just use a damp one. And then I'll come back through with this scuff pad. And you don't get everything off, but I think it leaves a nice kind of rustic look to it. And then I'm coming through with this quarter inch two flute fishtail end mill and I'm running at 150 inches per minute here just 0.1 depth for pass cut and I use this multi-tool just to trim my tabs off then I just put another coat of this polyurethane on and we can wait for that to dry and then we can call this one done Alright, thanks for checking out the video. I hope everybody was able to take at least one thing away from this. That's always a goal of mine. If you do have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I always try to respond to all of your questions on there. Again, big thank you to Precise Bits. Make sure you head over to their website and check them out. As always, thank you to the patrons. Really couldn't do it without you guys. I'll put a link down below for that if you'd like to check me out and help support the channel. Other great ways to keep this thing going are just to like, comment, and share these videos. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe. Once again, thank you everybody, and I will see you over on this next video.